Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Welcome to Playwrights Roundtable's Connected Voices, our very first virtual performance. Uh, what you'll be seeing tonight are new plays by local playwrights featuring our local actors. Uh, we put out a call about a week ago um, with the uh, idea that these would be about what we're going through right now and how we are still all connected through all this. Um, just to give you some ground rules on what's going on here tonight. Um, first of all, uh, we're gonna be doing uh, basically uh, nine plays. We're splitting one of them in two. Uh, we will be taking a break after the fifth play, a call for help, uh, because this is gonna run roughly about an hour or so, maybe a little more. So if you need to take a bathroom break, by all means, go right ahead. Um, a little bit about Playwrights Roundtable here for those of you who are unfamiliar with us or have just joined the group. Thank you for joining. Uh, we are Central Florida's only theater company that produces original plays year round. We've been around since 1997. We've literally produced hundreds of plays by hundreds of playwrights, uh, all the way from 10 minute plays to full lengths. So if you're looking for a place for scripts or a place for new work, this is the place to find them. Uh, this came about this event because like many others here in Central Florida, many other arts organizations, we wanted a way to participate and give back to our community uh, by keeping um, keeping people entertained, letting them know that there's, there's options out there while we're all homebound from this thing. Uh, and it came about uh, through the brain, it is the brainchild of one Bethany Dickens, uh, one of our board members and a, and a member playwright. Um, she came up with the idea that that we would have this theme of being connected um, and how the crisis is affecting everyone. So uh, we hope that you enjoy that what you see tonight. Uh, we do want you to do want to remind you that this is um, live online theater. So things could go wrong. We could have delays in the, the feed. Uh, my cat could jump up here onto the back of the of the chair, which would be cute, but also be very distracting. Um, you know, anything can happen. So just go with us. We're not going to, we're not the Royal Shakespeare company broadcasting live to theaters around the world. We're doing our level best to provide you, our community, um, the opportunity to have a little fun and be entertained this evening. Uh, keep in mind that all the plays that you're about to see are the, are the copyrighted work of their, of the playwrights. Um, so please do not reproduce this in any way, shape, or form. Uh, hopefully someday we will be able to see some of these on a real stage. So we'll see. Um, I believe that's about it. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our very first play. This is Patterns Repeat by Allison Stewart, Prologue. It is 1957. Lights up on a lower middle class family kitchen. Virginia is getting out knives to make dinner with. There is a radio station with the news Asian flu pandemic spreads across the United States. When Virginia hears the words Asian flu pandemic, she stops prepping. She walks over to the radio and turns the dial. She eventually stops on a station that is playing jazz music. Happy with herself, Virginia walks back over to the counter and bobs gently to the music as she prepares the ingredients for dinner. Graham, I'm home. Great, I was just about to start dinner. Give me the vegetables that you bought. Okay, I remembered everything you told me about picking produce. When you pick sugar snap peas, they have to be firm and crisp. When you pick herbs, they shouldn't be all brown and wrinkly, and... I'm glad you remembered. You're going to be the show up. Yeah, sure. So what are we having for dinner? I was thinking about a potato salad with um, maybe some eggs or something like that. You know how I love my potato salad. Virginia laughs at her own joke, then looks through the bag of vegetables. Her laughter ends as she keeps searching. Huh, I don't see any potatoes in here. I had to get potatoes. I'm so sorry. I must have spaced out again. Oh, again, Rose. You need to learn to focus more. I'll go out and get them. No. 
I don't think you should go out. Well, why not? It's not too late yet, and I enjoy walking around the market. It gives me these old bones some fresh air. Graham, did you hear on the radio about that new flu virus that's going around? Oh, yeah, that whole fiasco. It's nothing to worry about. I'm not so sure about that. Did you hear about Mrs. Morrison down the street? I heard she caught it and might be on Beth's door now. Oh, nonsense. I saw Mrs. Morrison a couple days ago, and she was fit as a fiddle. You're just overreacting. Okay, so I might be overreacting, but maybe you should be careful for the time being. Rose, I've lived through two world wars. I don't think a little cold could hurt me. But it's not just a little cold, it's a virus. A lot of people are dying because of it. Well, I'm not one of those people. You could be. Graham, I know it's hard to believe. I really shouldn't say this, but you're not as young as you were. I am healthier now than I was 20 years ago. I'm going to the market, and I'll see you when I get back. Grandma Virginia, please, please listen to me for once. I know that's hard for you to do. <sighs> well, what are you going on about now? I listen to you all the time. When do you? I go to the market every day, like you asked me to. I smile as I, as I stroll past the shops, as I walk through the square with the sun beating down on my neck. I crane my neck for the perfect produce. Sure, some days there are good things there. Ripe apples, succulent cherries, starchy potatoes. But most of the time, what I see is rotting in the sun. The sugary scent of decay always overwhelms me. I hate it at the market. It makes me think, will I be like that apple? Will I live in my prime in a mere moment and then rot away to nothing? I can live as a housewife, a simple mother, and that's all I could be. Is there more I could find? Honey, I, I really should be getting to the market. When mom died, I remember sitting by her hospital bed. She looked so pale and weak. She held my hand lightly. I felt her strength going away. I wanted to help her, but I couldn't. I couldn't help her. Rose crumbles against the counter. Victoria, Virginia, takes Rose's hand gently. Your mother was a very strong woman. She fought until the very end. I just, I want to make sure that doesn't happen to you, Graham, so I don't have to watch that all over again. I'll be okay. I'm a tough cookie. But... Virginia releases Rose's hand and walks away from her. She grabs the empty bag from the counter and starts to walk off stage left. Is there anything else you want from the market? No, thank you. Such good manners. I'll see you when I get back. I promise I won't be too long. Have a swell time. Rose listens to the jazz music playing on the radio station. She listens to it for a couple of moments, and then tiring of it already, she goes to shut it off. To be continued. And that is our prologue in 1957 of Patterns Repeat. We'll return to Patterns Repeat at the end of the program. Uh, that was Megan Jaluso as Rose and Amy Barnacle as Virginia. Next up, we have a play by Bruce Carr, Above and Beyond. Um, really like how this one plays with the varying levels of isolation and how that can affect people. Uh, without further ado, here is Above and Beyond by Bruce Carp. Millie McKay, an astronaut on the space station, is sitting in front of a laptop dialing up to speak with her husband, Andy. She is not having much success. Come on, come on. I should be able to get reception up here. I'm close enough to the satellites. She Andy. continues to type on her keyboard until there is finally a signal. Andy, are you there? Andy. Andy finally appears on his laptop. He has been having trouble dialing in too. 
He looks up at the screen, realizes he is connected with Millie. There you are. Success. Hi, honey. Oh, it's so good to see your face. Same here. In a couple of hours, I start my 100th day in space. Oh, it feels like more. And only about 200 days to go. Don't, don't remind me. How come you're not floating around the cabin? I'm not doing any experiments right now, so I have my seatbelt on. <laughs> so the mice are resting? Yeah. All this time in space isn't easy on them either. How are the boys? Oh, they've, they've been in their rooms. Doing homework, texting friends, the usual. It's late, almost 1130, so, so they're asleep. I should have called earlier. I lose track of time up here. Understandable. Do they seem okay to you? They're not upset with me, are they? Are you kidding? I've been gone for such a long time. They haven't been through such a long stretch without me, even during my training. They're fine, positively bursting with pride. You talked to them two days ago. You know they think you're the coolest mom. I guess I don't feel cool right now. It's lonely up here, and I miss you. Okay, I'll catch the next space shuttle if you'd like. If only. You'd love the view. The Earth looks so beautiful from up here. Yeah, the pictures you, you've taken are amazing. You'd never know how much trouble it's in. Millie, no one could predict that this virus was yeah, going to change. I know, but... You have enough going on. We'll all get through it. So, where are you right now? I'm over Australia. The reception is better from there than when I do FaceTime with our next door neighbor. We spent a little more on our equipment up here. How are you holding up? We're trying to make the most of it. Working from home isn't so bad for me either. Every day is casual Friday. It's so ironic that I'm up here safe from all the chaos. You might be the luckiest person in the world right now. Yeah, I suppose. It's a great feeling being up here, life changing, but I feel like I should be back on Earth. You took off into space before any of this hit. You trained for years for this opportunity. Embrace it. I know, and I am. I couldn't have done this without you. You're a hero to so many people. I'm just riding your wave. Aw, so can you wake the boys up? Uh, I, I need to tell you something. What, is something wrong? The boys, the boys aren't here. Why not? I tested positive for the virus. Andy, you didn't tell me. You're in the middle of your mission, and let's face it, you can't run back home to Texas just yet. But still, don't you think? I, I, I didn't want you to hear it through the media or from someone in mission control. I'm telling you now. You're scaring me. Where are the boys? Don't be scared. I got the results yesterday and sent the boys off last night to your parents' house. Do you or the kids have any symptoms? No, none of us. I'm here alone. The kids are being monitored. Your superiors at NASA were able to secure tests for the kids and for your parents, all negative. It's good to have friends. Do you think you got it at work? No, oh, I know so. There are two coworkers I know of who tested positive. There may be more. Frankly, it's better for you to stay in space. There's something I can sew on a pillow. It's better to be in space. Look, I didn't want you to worry. You know I will anyway. I'm not due to be home for months. I may ask mission control to end the mission. No, no you will not. We've got plenty of food in the house. Your parents will make sure I have whatever I need. They may have to drop it off on the front lawn and run, but they'll Not make sure. Funny. There's nothing you can do from where you are. If you were here, 
we'd still have to be separated. You're right. Now I'm absolutely feeling lonely. Me too. There are beeping sounds from Millie's laptop. Oh, do you have to go now? We're entering an area soon where we lose contact with Earth for a while. Okay. Okay, we'll talk again. Happy 100th day in space. Uh, you should be getting the Hallmark card soon. <laughs> I love you. You dope. I love you too. Andy, please be careful. I know, Millie. I know. I'm going to wash my hands right now. End of play. Thank you, guys. That was Carla Ellers as Millie and Mark Davids as Andy. Uh, great, great play there with the uh, the items about um, isolation. Good stuff. Next up, we have a, a play by Don Salvo. Um, Don Salvo has had a number of things produced by us, but he's also uh, part of what I call our celebration crew. Uh, there are a number of playwrights from down in the celebration area who have, um, in the last, I'd say probably three, four years, have been uh, getting a number of their works produced by us here. And not just us, but around the area and around the country. Uh, and uh, many of them can thank uh, the inestimable, I can't say that word very well, anyways, uh, William is uh, our, our playwright for that, uh, William Newkirk for Miss. He is also, uh, he also teaches playwriting and he had a class down in celebration that he did. And uh, a lot of those folks have since gone on to have their plays produced. So I'd like to give them all a shout out because they've done a lot of great work. Uh, this next one here is called Love Game Match by Don Salvo and it features Megan Jaluso again, this time as Alexandra and James Blaisdell as Luke. When lights come <laughs> up, Luke enters carrying a tennis bag and racket. Alex? No answer. He puts down the bag and calls again a bit louder. Alexandra, are you here? Alex? Luke? He I'm enters here. the opposite side of the stage with a tennis bag and racket and... Oh, I, I was afraid you weren't gonna come. It was a fight, but I convinced them that I had to practice. Same here. Uh, they said, oh, how ridiculous. It rained for six hours last night and all the tennis bubbles are closed because of the virus. I know. I said we picked this court because it's outside and isolated. How do you get cleaned and dry? My dad spent two hours pushing a broom. He hurt his back. Where is your dad? He dropped me off. He's really pissed. Said we can talk. I said I can walk the two miles home. What about your dad? In the car, waiting. Luke? Yeah? He said we have to stay at least six feet apart and not touch. I miss holding your hand. We can't, but we can still look at each other live, in person, not on our laptops. I want to touch your face. We can talk face to face for a change. This is killing me, Alex. You know this isn't about tennis at all. I know, it's about us, but you have to stay on your side of the net. A net? This tennis net? It may as well be a 10 foot high wall. Luke? Yes, Alex? Are you okay? No, I miss you. But do you feel okay? I worry about you. I would climb this wall to be with you. I know you would, that's why I worry about you. My parents say I have to stay home, not see you. They don't understand. Grown-ups just don't understand. Yeah, they can't keep us apart. I have an idea. Hold your racket out in front of you. What? Hold your racket out in front of you. Now touch my racket with yours. Luke and Alexandra hold out their rackets and move forward until the rackets touch. See, our rackets just kissed. It's not enough. That's as close as we can get, for now. They'll never keep us apart. They're not keeping us apart, Luke. They're keeping us safe. I can jump this net for you. They say that they want what's best for us. But how do we know that? I will climb any wall for you, Alex. And I will meet you anywhere but not till the virus is over. 
they slowly put down their rackets. The more they tell us no, the more I need to be with you. I, we haven't seen each other in so long. You're strong, Luke. You can handle this. I don't want to handle it. I, I want to hold you. I love you enough to say no to that. You will hold me again on a sunnier day and a better time. I just want to keep you safe. And apart. Yes, for now. I don't want for either of us to get sick. Oh, God, no. I, I would never want you to get sick. Never. Well, especially not because of me. So we need to take care of each other. How long do you think this will last? I don't know. It could be a while. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't ask. How are you doing? Are you feeling okay? I'm better now that I'm here with you. Better? Were you sick? No, I just missed you. Being with you, lunch together at school, the tennis matches where you kill practically everyone you play. Me? You're tops in the region. The team bus rides where we sit in the back holding hands. You leaning up, me, up against me with your head on my shoulder? Will it ever be like that again? I hope so. I think it will. My, It's my dad. He wants to leave. But that's not even long enough for a game. He knows we're not playing. He looked. Well, can we stay and talk for a little while longer? It's going to rain again soon anyhow. I can feel it. It's only April. Lots more rain to come. We can't drive you home. I understand. I don't want you getting soaked on your walk home. You could get sick. I love you, Alex. I know. I really do love you. I want you to stay strong. And if that means I can't see you until this virus thing is over, then that's what we'll do. Because that's how much I love you, Luke. I better start walking home. I have to face my dad. Our dads care for us. Yours clean off the courts and let us see each other and talk in person. I don't think they ever thought we were dumb enough to play in this rain. Lift your racket again, Luke. Okay. He lifts his racket to her and she taps her racket on Luke's. Here's a kiss. And here's one back. Luke taps his racket on hers. This would be so much better if only we had played ping pong instead. Do you think we can talk them into cleaning off the court again next week if it rains? If my dad's talking to me by then, I bet he would. He doesn't want me to do it. He's protecting my back for the tennis team. Something tells me he would do it again. They are protecting us, Luke. I'll get mine to help. I know he would. Alex? Yes, Luke? One last kiss. Yes, Luke. Their rackets kiss one more time, a little longer this time. You know I like winning my game's six love, but this was the best love game ever because of you. Me too. Talk to you tonight. You bet. See you next week, here. Nothing can stop me from being with you. Not even the rain? Not even the rain. This will be over someday. We won't need a tennis net or a wall to keep us apart. I know it will end. And that's what keeps me going, being with you hand in hand. Until then, stay safe, Luke. You too, Alex. I'll be here for you next week and every week, as long as it takes. Alex and Luke lower their rackets, smile at each other, turn and walk to their bags. They shoulder their bags simultaneously, turn to each other, lift their rackets as a wave and a salute, and exit. Blackout, end of play. Oh, how sweet. Cool little play there, Don. Thank you so, so much. Uh, and thank you guys for that reading. Okay, next up we have The Puzzle by Brianna Barrett. Uh, a little bit of note about Brianna. First of all, she's ridiculously talented um, and uh, is an amazing, amazing actress. Um, I had the good fortune of working with her last year on Geist, which was our full length production for Playwrights Roundtable. She is quite talented. However, I did not know that she also writes plays as we are about to read this one here. I think you'll agree that she's quite talented in that area too. Our actors for this one are Jenny Orenstein and Pablo Lorenzo. So let's get right to it. This is The Puzzle by Brianna Barrett.
Lights up on a closet. It is crammed tight and obviously uncomfortable and obviously lived in for at least a week. There is a man and a woman sitting inside on the floor. Beneath them are a couple of sweatshirts, one blanket and two pillows. A garbage bag is hung up haphazardly along the side of the left wall. The, at center is a short cardboard box turned upside down with a puzzle spread out on top. The puzzle is only one quarter of the way done and pieces in various different hues of blue are scattered around it. The man and woman stare intensely at the puzzle. The woman takes a piece and goes to put it in a spot. No, no, that doesn't go there. See, that's more of a lean blue. The other pieces around it lean towards a sky blue. Okay, but let me try it first. I'm telling you, it can't fit there. Well, maybe this piece just wants to be different. Maybe the people who made this puzzle tried to throw us off by changing the color of just this one piece. A puzzle maker would never do that. But they could. Come on, wouldn't you? Imagine they're just making this puzzle and just thinking, oh, this person is going to be so mad when she let their ex-boyfriend talk her out of putting the piece where it goes, where it's supposed to go, and all because it's a slightly different color. You know, there was no need to um, mention the ex-boyfriend part. It's important to remind ourselves of boundaries. Nick goes back to looking for a piece that would fit into a specific section of the puzzle. Sadie picks up the piece once more and goes to fit it into the spot she said it should go. Don't. Don't put the piece there. Did you not hear what I just said? Maybe it's supposed to go there. Yeah, and maybe it's not. And you're going to ruin the piece by trying to make it fit. I'm not going to ruin the puzzle. You will if you try to push it and fit into a space where it shouldn't be. But what if the piece belongs there? And what if it doesn't? And then you'll just be hurting all the other pieces around it, trying to make your own selfish piece fit. Don't call my piece selfish. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, piece of cardboard. Nick takes a moment to rub his eyes vigorously. Sadie takes this opportunity and tries to make the piece fit. Nick opens his eyes and notices. What are you doing? Huh? What? You're trying to fit the piece in. No, I wasn't. Look, you chipped the side of the other piece to the left. Now the sky blue is altered and it's ruined. Chill out. You overreact way too much. No, you don't overreact enough. You're consistently thinking about yourself instead of worrying about how your rash action may affect other people. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize this was about me now. It's always about you. I can't believe I'm stuck here with you right now. I literally wish I were anywhere else in the world right now. I can get Maui, Kuwait, really any island in Hawaii, even the Swiss Alps. That would be nice too. Are you even me right now? Wait, what? Look, we are facing a worldwide pandemic, and you're thinking about going on vacation? Well, yeah, just because we're stuck in here doesn't mean I still can't dream. Oh, well, you can't. Look, you, you can't go outside. You, you can't travel anywhere. You and I are stuck here in the safest place possible. Look, if we go outside that door, we will be at risk. We will expose ourselves and, and others, and it's just too dangerous. So we need to just stay here where it's safe and clean and just focus on this puzzle because that blue is not supposed to go there. No, see, this, this is why I can't be with you. I can't even be free enough to just wish for what I want. Look, it's not about what you want. I mean, want. God, I can't even hear myself think. I don't have a job. I can't pay any bills. I can't go outside. All I want to do is to be able to sit at my table at Brick House Coffee and watch the people walking by and see the, the kids playing in the playground across the street and the birds pecking at the crumbs in the ground and hear people laughing or even just ride on the subway sitting in this closet nick i don't even care that it's safe i can't feel anything Look, we, we need to keep ourselves safe and the only way to do that is for us to stay in i can't I'm sorry, Nick. I can't stay in here a minute longer. I'm going out. No, no, Sadie, don't. I can't do it. I don't belong here, crammed in here like this. Sadie, Sadie, please. It's, it's not safe. Look, I want you to live to survive this. But that's exactly it. This isn't living. It's surviving. I need to feel the sun and the birds and be free. You are being selfish. 
Think about all the other people who need you to stay here inside. I'm going. Sadie, wait. I Don't leave me alone in here. Please, I... I need you. Look, I, I can't make it through this alone without you. Sadie stops hands on the doorknob. I didn't think you needed anyone. Well, um... You never, not once, told me that you needed me the whole time we were together. I don't know. I, I guess you always seem so independent. Like you were doing your own thing and if you didn't need me, then how could I admit that I needed you? Nick, I loved you. Wasn't that enough? Well, but maybe you didn't really mean it. I did. But I felt like you didn't. Do you think I would lie to you about that? No. Good. Because I wouldn't. Look, I, I guess I was just scared that you didn't really love me the way I loved you. I gave myself to you, Nick. I gave myself to you more than I have done with any other guy. Well, well how was I supposed to and know And I can't you? change who I am or, or what I want. Look, you're right. And I get that. And I'm, and I'm not asking you to, to get back together with me or anything. I just... Look, all I know is that if you walk through that door, I don't think I'll be able to make it. You know, just stuck here by, by myself, I, I'll go crazy and and I, I would miss you a lot. So yeah, I, I need you. I mean, how else am I gonna finish this puzzle? Sadie hesitates. She looks at him, then at the door, then at the puzzle. She bends down, picks up the piece she tried to shove into place, and examines the board. Well, if the piece doesn't go there, it must go here. That's more of a turquoise, the ones next to it. Okay, well, how about here? Oh my god, it actually fits. <laughs> 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 Thanks. You're welcome. Blackout, end of play. That was the puzzle by Brianna Barrett. Uh, again, thank you guys for that wonderful reading. Next up, we have uh, a more serious play um, than uh, some of the other ones that we have here. Uh, we do encourage you all to uh, sit back and uh, really dig into this one. Uh, some really important messages here that I think a lot of us need to hear right now because it is a tough time. Uh, after this play, we will be taking five minutes. Uh, um, we'll, I'll still be on, but uh, we will include a, couple, a little bit of information afterwards uh, after this play uh, and also a little bit about what some other uh, groups are doing around town. So. Uh, this next play is a call for help by Katie Thayer featuring Carla Ellers and our own Bethany Dickens. Uh, please enjoy. Sandra is sitting at a desk with a laptop and a headset. IT Helpline, this is Sandra. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, have you tried turning it um, off and back on again? Okay, well, try that now. She fiddles with her phone for a moment. Oh, it did. Great. Um, anything else I can help with? Have a great day. Dana, in a bathrobe, walks to a chair that is elsewhere on stage. She takes out her phone and starts looking through it. I see helpline. This is Sandra. Uh-huh. It won't turn on at all. Hmm. And um and and you're sure it's plugged in? <laughs> yes, sir. It just needs to be plugged in. Uh-huh. Oh, that was it. Great. Um, anything else I can help with? Have a great day. 
Dana picks up her phone to her ear. IT helpline, this is Sandra. Is this the suicide prevention hotline? Well, um, no, this is the IT helpline. Never mind. Oh, wait. Dana hangs up her phone and pulls a bottle of pills from her bathroom pocket, bathrobe pocket. At the same time, Sandra looks through her laptop. She seems to find what she is looking for, and after a beat, Dana's phone rings. Dana puts the bottle down and answers. Hello. Hi, um, this is Sandra from the IT helpline. You, you just called. I didn't I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Well, I know I know who you were trying to reach. Did you need their number? No, it was stupid. I made up my mind anyway. To call them? You made up your mind to call them. Yeah, sure. Anyway, I have to go. Oh, please don't hang up. <sighs> Why? Um, because I don't feel like you're gonna call them. Why do you care? Because I can help? Sure, with IT. God, I couldn't even get the number I was trying to call right. I'm a failure at everything. Well, I'm sure that's not true. Don't be. Um, well, um, hey, why don't you um, tell me about yourself, please? Like, maybe um, your name. Dana. Dana. Hi, I'm Sandra. I know, you said. Oh, right. <laughs> we have to. It, it's our script. At, at the beginning. Um, doesn't mean people ever remember it though. I've I've been called Alexandra, Sanjay, and Meredith twice. Like <laughs> I haven't figured that one out. So um is Dana short for anything? No. My dad named me after his favorite dog he had as a kid. Oh um uh, well hey at least you got a favorite. I was named after my mother's least favorite aunt at my grandmother's insistence. <laughs> That's rough. Oh being named after a dog sounds more rough. Like how a dog says rough? Not a pun fan, huh? Whoa, hey, um, I didn't think the joke was that bad. I just, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Uh, unless you mean the thing that you want to do, and then yeah, um, don't do that. I want to die. I, I know it might feel that way. I, I mean, I've had those thoughts a lot too, you know, but wh whatever's going on has, either worked out or, or passed. I don't even know what is worth living for anymore. Um, um, do you have a partner? My husband left six months ago. He said I focused too much on work. Um, you have a career then? Had until today when they laid all of us off because of the crisis. Oh. All my life, I focused on work. I sacrificed relationships and friendships and visiting family. And now after building that life for over a decade, it just disappeared just because the career I based my identity on was deemed non-essential. I'm non-essential. Well, that, you know, that's happening to a lot of people right now. I didn't make it better. I've lost my purpose. I live alone. No one calls me. No one will even notice I'm gone. Well, I live alone too, uh, and it's scary sometimes and and lonely. But but I'll tell you what it it beats the last roommate I had. H have you ever had a roommate? That's my husband. Oh well, um, uh, let me tell you how much of a train wreck my last roommate was, and and you'll be thankful you never had one. So first red flag, I found her on Craigslist. Craigslist? Yeah, <laughs> I was. Pretty desperate. Well, um, she moves in with this bird. It was like some kind of parrot. Um, now, I like pets. I do. But she, she didn't tell me about this thing until move-in day. And I figure, um, cool, she'll like keep it in her room, right? Nope. She lets it just like fly free around the apartment and it shits on everything, like everything. So I tell her, hey, you've got to get rid of this bird. And you know what she says? Um, his name is Captain Featherbottom and you'll address him as such. Oh, it took me three months to get her out of there. How did you get her out? Well, I contacted a bird rescue and told them about the conditions Captain Featherbottom had been living in, and they took him in. But my roommate, all she saw was the window open and her bird missing. She accused me of bird slaughter. Um, <laughs> I did not correct her, and she moved out that night. That's pretty crafty. Yeah, so even when I'm lonely... I remember it's it's better than having a crazy person and their bird live with you. 
I just don't know what to do with my days. Yeah, and that's okay. Sometimes on my days off, all I do is sleep. But every day is a day off. And you're going to get so well rested. <laughs> that's all I have. I might as well sleep forever. No, mm, there's so much more. You could you could pick up a hobby, like learn a language, take a painting. You could get super buff. I don't have the energy. Okay, um, God, there are basically 4,000 streaming services now. You can pretty much watch any show or movie. Thank you. No. Thank you for talking. I think I'm going to go now. Yeah, no. No, I am. Because what happens next? I tell you everything is fine. We hang up, and then I go back to the hell and loneliness I've been living in every day. You give me your number and say to call if I ever need to talk, and I'll half-heartedly accept it. You'll move on with your merry life in your bird-free apartment, content you did a good deed, barely giving me a second thought. That's not true. <laughs> I'd rather be honest with you now, so you don't have to see an obituary for a Dana a week from now and wonder. You can't do this. <laughs> Why not? Because I can't go through this again. Again? Um, a little over a year ago, my little brother committed suicide. He was sick for a long time and he hit it really well, but I knew something was off. Um, I called him and he seemed really out of it. He confessed that he had a lot to drink and he was ending it all that night. I, and I, I tried, <laughs> I tried to talk him out of it, but then he just said goodbye. And then there was a shot and then, there was silence, and I, I, I just thought if I had called him sooner. If he wanted to go that badly, you couldn't stop him. I couldn't, yes, but I, I can't help you because you were looking for help. You may have called me by accident, but you meant to reach me. Yeah, I get it. Things are awful right now, and bad news is happening every day. Yes, it is hard to live alone when you're not supposed to go anywhere, but one day... It will get better. And until then, you are to talk to. And how do I know you're not just saying that? Because I really need a friend too. Then what's next? Um, <laughs> do you like Chinese food? Does anyone not? Well, there's a great Chinese place next to my job, and I'm done in 20 minutes. Um, if you give me your order and an address, I can swing by after. Give my address to a stranger? <laughs> but you could be a murderer or something. Oh, don't worry. I'll stand six feet away for social distancing and non-murdering purposes. I'm, <laughs> I'm texting you now, so you have my non-work number. Sandra types on her phone. Thank you. Uh, don't thank me until you taste this Chinese food. Um, but thank you for not hanging up. I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Dana hangs up her phone. She picks up the pill bottle and stuffs it under a cushion. She starts looking through her phone for a menu. Then after a moment, into the headset. Hello? Sorry. I... IT Helpline, this is Sandra. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, have you tried turning it off and back on again? Blackout. End of play. Okay, so we're going to take five minutes now so we can all pull ourselves back together after that one. Uh, i I'm got all the feels right now. That's uh, a great job by... Both ladies there, and thank you, Katie, for writing this one. Um, since we have five minutes, uh, we'll be uh, we'll be starting with over and out at at uh, eight fifty by my clock here. Just a couple of things uh, we want to point out. This last play uh, really was the one that kind of hit at home for us once we received it, um, because it is tough what we're all going through right now. We know that it's tough when you all out there. Uh, those of you who are sitting home from jobs, especially here in Orlando, where you know we've really been hit hard by that sort of thing, and uh, it can be difficult, and it can be lonely, and uh, you're not sure what's going to happen. So, 
Uh, we did want to share with you the National Suicide Prevention Hotline phone number. You see it there on your screen. It's 1-800-273-8255. It's, um, it's vitally important that you, you write that down, whether for yourself or a family member or a loved one, a friend. Just have it handy so in case you know you find yourself in that moment where either you're dealing with something or someone you know is feeling that way that you can help them get this information it's very important you know it's always the number one thing is always you know get it extended out you know think about get them thinking about tomorrow or have them wait to make a decision you know they've got all the all the the stuff there on the suicide prevention uh lifeline to help out people but we did want to share that with you tonight because uh, we know that that is something that is very much a real concern right now. Uh, before we, uh, we got about three minutes here, uh, I'd like to point out that uh, we are not the only group, uh, obviously, here in Central Florida that is uh, doing live online performances and, and offering online things such as uh, concerts, uh, dance recitals, and theater. Uh, there's a few I'd like to make you aware of here, and this is through. Uh, a list that I have from WMFE. So thank you, Nikki Darden Creston, for uh, sharing this. And I'm, I know there's more than just what's on this list here, but I just wanted to point these out. Uh, Central Florida Community Arts has a virtual concert series. Uh, I believe it's every night at 6 p.m. At sec except for Thursdays for a live performance. You know, check that out. Uh, the weekly lineup is released every Monday on the CFC Arts Facebook page. So go ahead and check them out. Uh, the Blue Bamboo Center for the Arts has a pay-per-view and streaming video that shows three times a week, featuring concerts, I believe. Uh, I know that is a concert venue, so you can check that out. Uh, there is Orlando Game Night Home Edition for Adults, hosted by Mikey P. Uh, I believe the group that's hosting it is called Bears in the City, if I'm reading this right. They have trivia and jackbox games Mondays at 8 p.m. It's live streaming on YouTube. Uh, in order to play, you'll need two devices, one to watch the YouTube live stream and a mobile phone to play. So you can check that out. Um, my old friend, Kenny Babel, who uh, my wife and I have known for many, many years, uh, has a thing that he's doing online called Kenny Babel Reads the Classics. Uh, it's, he's an Orlando-based Shakespearean an actor and entertainer, and he reads aloud classic public domain books in two sessions, stories for kids at 8 p.m. and stories for adults at 9.30 p.m. Uh, you can watch, you can listen and watch along in the Facebook live sessions and comment or watch the videos anytime on his Facebook page. Um, our good friend, uh, John Dodonna, who's, uh, who's worked with us a number of years, actually, he directed the very first play that I had produced for PRT. Uh, he has Phantasmagoria, as many of you know, they are live streaming their performances, uh, on Facebook live Sundays at 8 PM. So you can check that out. Uh, Opera del Sol has a Thirsty Thursday Cabaret. Uh, that is an hour of live entertainment each week with a local vocal or opera performer. You can be serenaded with favorites and chat with creative director Nicole Dupre. Uh, Dupre, I believe that's actually. Uh, Center for Florida Vocal Arts has Friday Night Live. Uh, it's a weekly streaming concert, accepting requests and having real talk about staying inspired in the midst of the pandemic. That's a good one. Definitely check that out. The Timaqua Arts Foundation has Timaqua Live, rebroadcast from the archives. Uh, the doors are closed to the public, Timaqua Arts, but they are rebroadcasting their concerts. Uh, the organization also is gonna be working with local artists on a schedule for new live shows at some point. Also, Opera Orlando has something called The High Note. Uh, they are showcasing interviews with artists and past performances in a live stream Fridays at noon on their Facebook page. And I know there's other companies doing this as well. I believe the Orlando Shakespeare is doing some stuff. Uh, you can check that out on their Facebook page as well. They'll have all the information. All right, um, that was five minutes. Um, you know, please do check those folks out and hopefully they'll uh, they'll get back with us and, and, and send some folks our way too. Um, there's a lot of great people here in this town. Orlando is ridiculously talented and you have the opportunity now from the comfort of your home to check out all these people. So please do it. There's a lot of great talent here. Uh, take this opportunity. Maybe, maybe for various reasons you can't get out and do, um, you know, because there's so many performances happening. Well, now you can check them out through live streams. We also like this one, they record them, they put them up on their Facebook page. You can watch them afterwards. Uh, do check them out, take the opportunity. You're gonna see a lot of people you haven't seen before. Uh, a lot of actors, a lot of singers, a lot of dancers. 
you know, and, and a lot of and a lot of companies that maybe you are not as familiar with. So take this opportunity to take a virtual tour of Orlando's art scene, and I think you'll find how rich we are here in the city. Beautiful. Okay, let's move on to our next play, Over and Out, by Bethany Dickens, who I believe has uh, recovered by now from the previous play. Uh, this is uh, going to feature Katie Thayer and James Blaisdell. So let's move ahead to that one. This is Over and Out by Bethany Dickens. Shelley and Miles both enter their respective childhood bedrooms. They seem to be running away and taking a moment alone to breathe. Yes, mom, I hear you. I just need a second. I'll be down in a minute. Miles sinks to the floor. Shelley's gaze falls on her old walkie talkie. She starts to leave, but then picks it up and thinks, pushes the button and speaks. Miles reacts when he hears it in his room. Does anyone out there feel like the bar for being a human has been raised like unfairly high? Miles rummages around for his walkie talkie. Where is that stupid thing? I mean, when my mom was this age, she had three kids and a house, but I don't have time for that. I'm surviving a pandemic. Miles finds it. I know exactly what you mean. Uh, Shelly, stupid, your finger's still on the button. I mean, how am I supposed to, like, could she just adjust her expectations a little? I'm right there with you, Shelly, if only you knew. Who the hell is this? It's Miles from next door. <laughs> oh, wow, that's Who, who did crazy. you think you were talking to? the world it's a two-way radio dummy i know you are but what am yikes wow that came right back <laughs> yeah i know how have you been well uh the world is ending it sure is but as you might have figured out i'm an adult now so i can handle it do you remember when we used to play uh, the ground is lava yes oh <gasps> Yes, it does feel like that. <laughs> but you're an adult. Hey, I was pretty good at it too until... Yeah, screw it. Being a kid was more fun. It was. I mean, my best friend lived next door, right? When we weren't together, we were walkie-talkieing. Oh, I wish I could come over and see you. Oh, don't start. Don't start what? We need to be smart social distancing. Right, that's why we got these in the first place, remember? Oh yeah, you had something really weird. But it was just bronchitis. That's it? Oh, I was so freaking worried. I thought it was fatal. Yeah, <laughs> stakes were so high back then. Ugh, I know, I know. And I liked being worried. Oh yeah? Uh, it was an adventure. Yep, I barfed up my popsicles for two straight days. Ew. No, I'm serious. It was summer, so they had those uh, 4th of July rocket-looking popsicles. I don't want to hear this. Red, white, and blue all over the bathroom. Yeah, adventure. Okay, okay, poor you. I just meant I might have romanticized it. Really? Mm-hmm. So embarrassing. I thought I'd be called to nurse you back to health, like in ye olden times. I would have loved that. I was so bored. <laughs> and I was so... Yeah, uh, we talked every day. You lost your voice. Wait, did, did you have a crush on me? Stop it. I was 10. Yeah, exactly, which is way before I did that dumb... I don't want to talk about it. Declared my love for you. That was different. How? It was serious. Yeah, okay. I was too young. So were you. Hey, do me a favor, okay? Don't lecture me. I'm not that kid anymore. Um, yeah, that's fair. So, uh, do you have a job now? Are you taking time off? Look, I, I've been thinking about what to say to you now that we're older. Can I just say something funny? I still love you. It's weird. Uh, I hear your voice and I know you're this grown up person, 
Take your button off the hand, uh, take your hand off the button, Shelly. But in my head, you're still 13. Which, of course I saw you at parties and school and stuff. Shelly, let me say it. But in my head, you stayed this kid because I needed a friend. And I wished I had a friend. Not like a work colleague or someone I had to take care of or someone whose feelings I kept hurting even though I didn't mean to, just a friend. Over. So first of all, I'm about two feet taller than I was when I was 13. Okay, got it. Facial hair? Uh, not intentionally. Mm, but muscles for sure. I had a college gym phase. I'm still riding. Uh, everything's different now. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. No, Shelly, I, I mean that. It, it's different now. It has to be. I know. <sighs> Damn it. But, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I could come over. It's not safe. I just feel like we could figure things out. Shoot. I'm sorry. <sighs> I need to check on my mom. Oh, sure. Fine. She's on a medicine regimen like you couldn't imagine. No, no, that's fine. Uh, tell her I say hi. I will. It's, um, it's good to hear your voice, Miles. Bye. Shelly starts to exit, then hesitates. Miles wants to stay, say something, but instead, I will always love you. Over and out. Blackout, end of play. Thank you guys. That again was Over and Out by Bethany Dickens, another one of our multi-talented people here at Playwrights Roundtable, uh, featuring uh, Katie Thayer, another uh, one of our uh, multi-talented writers and actors and directors, and also James Blaisdell, who uh, I haven't mentioned it uh, previous to this he has also worked with us before on a couple of plays including geist last year which are which is a full-length play of ours uh he, he is quite the amazing actor uh, i really hope everybody out there is getting a f uh, feel for that especially all these guys they're, they're doing really really well but i want to give a shout out to james because i really like his work uh moving on we uh, our next play is through the door by jeanette dozier uh, who is, along with Allison Stewart, is a first-time playwright with us. Um, this one this one is pretty cute. I think you'll really enjoy it. This one features Mark Davids and Carla Ellers again as another couple, but this time they are not in space. Uh, so let's head over to Through the Door by Jeanette Dozier. We see a bedroom adjacent to a kitchen separated by a door. Both rooms are visible on stage. Inside the kitchen, Nedrick is armed with a can of Lysol spray dousing every surface. Off stage, a door opens and shuts. Nedrick hurries, spraying the bedroom door, paying special attention to the knob. Then, as if taking one last look around, he quickly shuts himself in the bedroom and locks the door. Sally enters the kitchen, holding a bag of groceries. Nedrick, are you home? Yes, honey. Sally proceeds to unpack the groceries. You would not believe the lines at the store. You'd think it was the, the world was ending. But I got your vitamins and I got I your... Did, did you get my orange juice? You don't need all that sugar. I got you apple juice. It's better. Not much, but it is. Apple juice? What am I, a child? I wonder sometimes. She crosses to the door and tries to open it. It's locked. Why have you locked the door? And why is it wet? Now, honey, I don't want you to get upset. Upset? Open the door. I can't do that. It's for your protection. What are you talking about? She rattles the door handle hard. It's no use. You can't come in. I'm infected with coronavirus. Corona? That's literally impossible. You've refused to leave the house at all since this started. I don't know how, but I have. It's too late for me, but, but you'll be safe as long as I'm in here. 
Sally rattles the door again. Nedrick, open this damn door. You're being ridiculous. Why can't you see I'm doing this for you? Because as usual, you didn't think any of this through. All my things are in there. My clothes, my toiletries, phone charger. If you really are sick, what am I supposed to do? Is that all you can think about while I'm here dying? You're not dying, but my phone is. At least give me my charger. I can't. It's contaminated now. Sally bangs against the door frustrated. This isn't funny, Nedrick. I agree. Death usually isn't. This isn't fair. That's my bedroom, too. You know what's unfair? The person who goes out in a mask and gloves when there isn't a pandemic ends up a statistic. That's not fair. Exactly. You're a hypochondriac. Don't you think you might be overreacting? Hmm. I have a sore throat. My, my eyes are watering. I have a headache. And not a fever, but I'm slightly warmer than usual. Uh, I'm feeling very warm. Ah, symptoms of COVID-19. According to Dr. Google. Oh, don't not Google. Even real doctors use it. Real doctors know what's credible and what isn't. Then how do you explain my symptoms? I don't know. It's April. It's Florida. It's hot. And it's spring. Pollen season. Are you sure it's not allergies? Mm. Nedrick is stumped. He hadn't considered that. Unknownst to Sally, he quietly finds his allergy pills in his nightstand and takes one before rejoining her at the door. No response, Dr. Barnes? You don't know everything, you know. Re remember that one time you said I was fine, but I had walking pneumonia. <laughs> I had to drive myself to the emergency room because you thought I was overreacting. That was one time in 32 years of marriage. If I took you seriously, every time you thought you were sick or dying, we'd live at the hospital. <laughs> Maybe we'd get a wing named after us. <sighs> Listen, if something happens to me, you'll be all the kids have. You, you want them to be orphans? Sally gives up and sits on the floor back against the door. Shut up talking like that. Nothing's going to happen to you. Are you comfortable on the floor? Why don't you go relax on the couch? Well, I'm not going to leave you if you're sick. Nedrick joins her on the floor on his side of the door, and he adjusts trying to get, him, uh, get comfortable. Remember that blow-up mattress when we first got married? <laughs> we were too broke to afford a real bed. It was about as comfortable as this floor, but... If memory serves, we didn't mind. We were newlyweds. Not much mattered then. As long as we were together. Patching holes and, and dreaming of our future. I miss that. The dreaming, not patching the ratty old mattress. <laughs> Why did we stop? We accomplished most everything we wanted. With the kids gone, I guess we got stuck in a routine. It's been a while since we've talked like this. I didn't think we needed to. You always seem to tell me what I think anyway. That's not fair. I talk to you all the time when and then you claim we never we never had the conversation with me and the kids. Well, well, it, it's a lot with the kids, work and marriage. You know forgetfulness runs in my family. Uh, remember my mother? My mother was very forgetful. Your mother had selective hearing and a discriminating memory. She knew what she was doing. You're right. It is a lot. But someone has to keep it all together for the family. And you do. Don't think I didn't notice. Nedrick opens the door and takes her in his arms and kisses her. Ooh, what about coronavirus? Right, right again. I didn't think about allergies. I took a pill when you mentioned it. And your symptoms? Gone. You said it. I'm a hypochondriac. I love you anyway. No more news for a while. Probably a good idea. Would you really have stayed in there alone if you were sick? To keep you safe? Absolutely. Blackout, end of play.
All right, thank you, uh, Mark and Carla. Great job again, as always. Next up, we have another play by Bethany Dickens. This one is called Alone Together. It features Pablo Lorenzo and James Blaisdell. Uh, please enjoy. Again, that's Alone Together by Bethany Dickens. We see an apartment living room with a blanket splitting it down the middle. Robin is on one side of the room. Easton is on the other. You could just leave. You know I can't. You know it's dangerous. You staying here is dangerous. For me, all this stupidity is compromising my immune system. Don't joke. It's a pandemic. I'm not joking. I am defending myself. I just want an even amount of spoons. I gave you several. I, but no, soup spoons. These are tiny. Well, you have smaller hands than me. Oh, the point isn't the handle, it's the bowl. The what? The scoopy part. Well, well, you don't need it. I have all the soup. Well, the classification soup spoon doesn't limit the number of foods it can be used no, on. Okay, fine. Thank you. Easton grabs the spoons, Robin ducks under the divider. Stupid, I mean, who really cares? They're all my spoons anyway. No, they're not. Uh, hey, stay on your side. I'm getting the spoons. Well, I was going to throw them at you. Oh, no thanks. Not violently. Here. This is a tablespoon for measuring things. Y yeah, it has that big, um, uh, what do you call it, bowl? I need one of the normal spoons. W well, they're mine. My mom got them. They're for both of us. Oh, no, no, no. See, there's no both of us anymore. I mean... Oh, 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 fine, 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 fine. So give me back the TV. No way. We, we bought that together. Oh, yeah, sure. With money I made. Oh, okay. Here we go. Well, in income disparity-wise, the TV is maybe, what, 2% yours? I'll give you partial custody of the remote. You know what? That's it. I I'm leaving. Well, you can't. It's not an official quarantine. The government can't stop me. Oh, where the hell are you going to go? My mom's. In Asheville? Well, what else am I supposed to do? Actually, don't answer that. We we broke up, so just stop caring. Easton, leaving right now is really dangerous. Well, I'm not scared. I'm done being scared, Robin. I am just so tired and pissed off. And yes, this 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 is awful. I know. I know. Okay, I'll stay on my side. Look, and I don't want to hear a word about spoons. You got it. Robin goes back to the other side. I mean, of all the things that changed. I, th oh, I thought we weren't talking. Not about spoons. So many rules. But shut up. You, you like rules. Look, I, I was just going to say that of all the things that are different now, the, this one really sucks the most. So why did you end it? Well, I, I don't know. Well, we have figure time. We have time to figure it out. What's this? What, what's with with you with figuring things out? I mean, there's nothing. There's no reason. I just realize I'd rather be alone. But that doesn't make sense. Why does it need to make sense? It's life. I, I mean, look around us. Life does not make sense right now. Well, because you need to be in control of it for some reason. What is that supposed to mean? All I'm doing is taking care of us. Well, stop. I, I don't want you to take care of me. That's what I'm trying to say. I got this, Robin. I can survive this pandemic all by myself. What, by marching out there and driving 15 hours? Look, just say that you think I can do it. I'm not going to lie to a delusional person. Okay, fine. Then I'm going. And I'm taking the Cheerios. There's no more Cheerios. Everything's in cans. And you don't know how to use a can opener. So, Well, great. I'll just eat when I get there. Well, you, your mom has asthma, right? Are you sure she's? Su it's such a good idea to just show oh up? Oh my God! Well, why are you doing this? I'm just trying to protect you. Well, stop! Look, we, we broke up. I don't even live on the same side of the house anymore. I'm trying to make it right. Make what right? I don't know. Okay, the, the person I love most in the world would rather go out there into a pandemic than stay here with me. And all I know how to do is try. Try less. 
That doesn't make sense. I know. Look, you're right about my mom. I'm staying. We did have Cheerios. I know. I hid them because I love you. I, I bet you also ate a bunch. Probably not even with gloves or whatever. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm not perfect. Yeah, obviously. And I love you anyway. Are you still there? Yeah. I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Good. Blackout end of play. All right, great job, guys. Thank you so, so much. That was Alone Together by Bethany Dickens featuring Pablo Lorenzo and James Blaisdell. Next up, we have a play by one of our longtime uh, and uh, very prolific members, Ken Pruce, uh, whose name I'm probably mangling again. And I'm sorry, Ken, I have no idea when my brain just does not accept the spelling of your name. So um, this is a fun little play, a fun, great play for those of you out there. Uh, featuring Jenny and Katie. I think you'll really uh, enjoy what this one has to say. And uh, we'll switch over to that one right now. This is Seconds by Ken Pruce. Kendall pops into a computer screen. She looks around awkwardly for a beat, then flashes a huge smile as Nadia appears. Not he waves and moves out of the window. Uh, you there? <laughs> I am one sec. Um, I was shutting my door. Hey, uh, I can't talk long. I understand. Uh, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. 28 and I've never Skyped. <laughs> I'm happy to be your first. <laughs> Yee, that sounded better in my head than it actually did out loud. <laughs> we'll just blame any awkwardness on the app. It's great to see you face to face, as a uh, face to face as we get these days. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sorry about all the text and and then the lack of text. Things are a little crazy. Um, I wasn't trying to avoid you. I promise. Yeah, I get it. It's just weird timing. Weird times. The weirdest. I've had people make up stories to end things after the first date before, but if this whole isolation, quarantine, killer virus scenario is your elaborate <sighs> ruse to avoid going out again, you win hands down. Oh, you caught me. Pretty impressive, right? <laughs> Creating maps, updating charts, issuing statements from the CDC. Ugh, getting all those people to play along. Everyone but the president and Republican governors. Mm, there's a church by my apartment that doesn't seem on board yet either. If Fox would just carry my fake news, <laughs> uh, we shouldn't be making light of this, should we? Probably not. <laughs> Strange, <laughs> isn't it? Not knowing what to do, what will happen next. To be fair, I've always suffered from those issues. This really just amplifies it. Hard to believe it's only been two weeks. Ten days. What? Ten days since the stay-at-home order, 11 um, since I came here, 12 since the night on the beach. Feels like forever. <laughs> Your uh, parents doing okay there? They're healthy so far, thanks. Sweet, you're home to take care of them. Well, technically I'm home because I can't afford my apartment without a job. Hmm. But your version sounds better, so let's go with that. <laughs> How are things over there? Uh, it's just me and the fish. We're getting along fine. Swimmingly? Ah, so it's okay to make light of my pets. Fish aren't pets. <gasps> Is this our first fight? Do you pet them? Do you play with them? Do you give them names? I feed them. Uh-huh. And if you're quarantined too long, eventually they'll feed you. Mm -mm. Fish are friends, not food. Finding Nemo. 
It was one of my favorite movies. <laughs> <laughs> I remember your seagull impression when they swiped your ice cream. That was embarrassing. <laughs> Oh God, it was already embarrassing when you ordered rum raisin. <laughs> oh, the seagulls just tried to limit the damage. I still think you'd like it. Rum raisin? Finding Nemo. I suggested it because there's a quote for everything. I told you, I'm more of the classic movie type. But it is a classic. We need to change the subject. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shall we get to the elephant in the room? What? Whether or not we'll have a second date? Uh, important topic, and Nima will likely play a role in that decision, but I was referring to the actual elephant in the room. Kendall points. Nadia is confused for a second, but then looks behind her seeing a stuffed elephant. Mm. Ah! Bumby. I won him at a carnival when I was ten. Ah, oh, carnivals are the best! Uh, the tilt-a-whirl. The fun houses. The funnel, the funnel cakes. cakes. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you could have tried to win a goldfish. Yes, but I wanted something I could actually love. Oh, well, I'd love. <clears throat> Is that a pony <laughs> on the poster behind you? No, it's a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your childhood bedroom? If you consider 14 through 17 my childhood. This decor is from high school? Look, I was not the hippest kid in the graduating <laughs> class. I mean, it's kind of cool, though. My room has remained virtually untouched in 10 years since I moved out. Virtually? Well, my mom's a compulsive duster, so things are a little cleaner. Mm -hmm. She also organized a random pile of swimming medals, so they hang on a, on the wall in the exact order in which I won them. Wait, you're a swimmer? Ooh. And you hate fish? Did a school of trout cut you off in a final lap or something and cause you to lose a championship? First of all, I swam in a pool, so there were no trout. Mm -hmm. Although, there was a girl named Kathy Carp. <laughs> Second of all, I don't hate fish. I just don't consider them pets. Mm. And third of all, I didn't lose championships as evidenced by the display of chronologically arranged and compulsively dusted medals. I think everything in your room is awesome. The <laughs> elephant, the unicorn, the medals. <laughs> you. My parents <laughs> divorced and relocated years ago, so. I don't have a childhood room. Any precious and oddly preserved awards? Uh, I got third place in a talent show once. Oh, the seagull impression? Believe it <laughs> or not, I used to be a dancer. Oh, why wouldn't I believe that? You're expressive when you smile. You're elegant when you move. And you're graceful when you're not holding an ice cream cone. I think I'll take that as a compliment. Oh, <laughs> I hope so. I have zero medals for flirting. That may be the best I can do. I'm a little embarrassed to admit it, but you're actually the first girl that's ever been in this bedroom in a romantic capacity. Oh, well, I'm happy to be your first. Nope, sounds just as weird as when you said it. <laughs> oh, how about you? Ever sneak someone into your bedroom back in high school? Uh, well, in 10th grade, my neighbor, Jimmy Wyatt, came over to study for science. We went to my room to find my missing notes. He said he wondered what it would be like to kiss me. So I let him. A science experiment. Very academic. So what happened? Uh, we had no chemistry, and the only anatomy we encountered was the diagram of a frog. Sorry. Why? Jimmy found my notes, tutored me to an A, and made me realize I was into chicks. Still ranks as one of my top 10 kisses ever. Oh, my parents are stirring out there. I may have to go at any second. Anyone else I might know on that top 10 kiss list? Uh, there may be a kiss that rings a bell. A brilliant sunset on the horizon, the majestic roar of the surf. Obnoxious spring breakers strolling over the dunes, hooting like they were at a strip club. I don't remember anybody but us. Uh, you're a much better flirter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jimmy Wyatt was a hell of a tutor. 
I always dreamed of kissing someone and feeling like the whole world just stopped. This this isn't exactly how I envisioned it. You're not enjoying being back in the old house? Dad sleeps in the guest room. Mom yells at me about politics. I spend most of my time hiding in here reading, crushing on someone that I can't be with, and worrying about the future. It's exactly the same as when I was in high school. Mm. Except for the whole apocalypse thing. Right. When you texted that you were going to be staying at your parents' place, I toyed with an ultimate romantic high school gesture. You were going to ask me to prom. <laughs> I was going to stand in front of your house at a proper social distance, holding a boombox over my head, <laughs> blasting a love song until you agreed on a second date. So what stopped you? Uh, my old breakdance crew still has my boombox. It'd be a Mad Max situation buying batteries at Walmart. And I don't actually have your parents' address. I could text you. Wait a minute. Your talent show talent was breakdancing? Mm, so many secrets still left to share with each other. Oh, plenty of time to share them, I guess. <laughs> it's sad. But hopeful, too. Don't you think? I'm hopeful. So, hopeless sometimes, but. <laughs> yeah, I think we all are. Uh, that's why we have to keep searching for something. For someone. We have to tell ourselves to find hope, to not give up, to, I don't know. Just keep swimming. Right. <gasps> Wait, that's Finding Nemo. I know, I watched it. When? After the beach, I could see it meant something to you. Why didn't you tell me? I planned to, but the global pandemic just sort of steered our texts in a new direction. That was a really sweet gesture. You owe me. A sweet gesture? A movie. <laughs> You'll have to wait till I find the perfect one, though. I'm not going anywhere. None of us are going anywhere. Hmm. I mean, I'm in this for the long run. If you want me to be. I can be patient. I can be patient too. <sighs> my mom is yelling. And my dad. Mm. If patient doesn't work, I may need you to be heroic. How so? Mm, you could bang on the front window shouting my name, bar the door when I run out and we could ride away together staring into each other's eyes. You've planned this out pretty well. It's the ending of The Graduate. Oh, uh, never seen it. <gasps> That's the movie then. You've got to watch it. What, you just spoiled the ending. Uh, well, sort of. I mean, the ending is en enigmatic though. It celebrates love yet shows the uncertainty of of everything. Some see it as happy, but some see it as really sad. How do you see it? I think it changes each time I watch. Mm -hmm. Depends on where I am in my life. I'd love to watch it here. Here at home? Here with you. We could Skype tomorrow night, stream it together and pause to talk at any time. Okay. I'm sorry, I gotta go. Um, I'll text the details. I say we call it a date. Seconded. They share a smile. Some may see it as happy. Some may see it as sad. Nadia blows a kiss that turns into a wave goodbye. Her window closes. Kendall stares at the screen, contemplating what lies ahead, and closes her window as the screen fades to black. End of play. And thank you, ladies. And thank you, Ken, for a great script. I really like the message in that one that we can still be hopeful and just keep swimming. Um, it's one of the reasons why we put that as the penultimate play in, in here. Um, so I, I know I need to hear that. So thank you, Cam, for that message. Okay, finally, we have our epilogue, Patterns Repeat by Allison Stewart, part two. This time uh, we have Amy Barnacle playing Rose, who has now grown up, and Megan Jalusa is playing her granddaughter again, who happens to be named Virginia. Again, this is Patterns Repeat by Allison Stewart, and we'll see you right after this one for some final notes and 
then we're done. So enjoy patterns repeat, folks. It is now 2020. The living room of a middle class house. Rose, now 70 years old, is packing a bag. It is small and looks to be used purely for overnight tr trips. There are packets of hand sanitizer, gloves, and masks next to the bag. Here be Rose. I'm back from getting gas. Hi, sweetie. How's the outside world? Not as exciting as I remember it being, but still better than being stuck here all day. Well, I'm glad I was able to give you a break from being stuck in this absolute prison. Haha, -ha, you're so funny. How's packing going? Good. Did you pack the extra hand sanitizer I gave you? Yes. How about the masks, gloves? I told you the hospital has those things for us. But you still pack them just in case, right? I will if it makes you stop asking questions. You really need to go to work. They just shut a bunch of things down. They are short staffed at the hospital right now and they have more people coming in every day. People need help right now. I know people need help right now, but they need to get help from someone else. Someone younger. We've been over this before. I took an oath to take care of people when they're sick. You must understand that. I understand that you're over the age of 65 and thus more susceptible to having serious side effects. I won't suffer any side effects. How do you know you won't suffer any? Virginia, I need you to slow down and- And, and what? Watch you walk off to a battlefield? It's not a battlefield. It's a hospital and it is where I work. I need you to understand that. Well, I don't understand. I do what you tell me to do all the time. I get the groceries, I get gas, I act like everything is normal. But I feel a creeping presence following me. This feeling of foreboding weighs my neck down with a strain of worry and panic tipping me over. I see the news, I see my phone, I see so many different things. It feels like it's getting worse every day. I can't sleep. When I close my eyes, nightmares ravish my mind. I see you, laying in a bed, pale as a ghost. I grip your hand. It's normally so strong and warm in mine, but it feels like I'm grasping air. I can feel you going away from me, your shallow breaths making your chest fall in and out. The slow simmer of life fizzling. You're so weak. A loud sound goes off. Then you fade away from me. I can't look at my phone. I hear about a famous person that has died because of it or someone diagnosed with it. I see your face there instead. I could laugh easily when it was far away. Oh, it's never gonna come here. We can sacrifice the elderly. We're safe, it's in another country. But now it's here and we can't fight it. And every day, I hope that it stays far away from people who I love. She falls onto the couch. Rose sits down next to Virginia on the couch. Have I ever told you about the Asian flu? The what flu? The Asian flu. It was another disease that came around in the 1950s. I got so sick from it. I was stuck in bed for two weeks straight. I was so tired, I couldn't move. That sounds awful. It sure was, but I recovered. My grandmother worked so hard to make me well again. I was so sick get it too but she never did I guess you get your stubbornness from her it feels like it sometimes I just want you to remember there may be some people who want people like me to go but there are some like you who want to remember us in our stories Rose hugs Virginia tightly they stay there for a moment and then releasing Virginia, Rose grabs her bag off the couch and stands. She hangs it over her shoulder and starts to exit stage left. Grammy, just be careful, okay? Don't worry. I'm a tough cookie. Rose exits. Virginia sits on the couch, deep in thought. Glancing over at the piles of hand sanitizer masks and gloves on the couch, she sighs and grabs a bottle of hand sanitizer and squirts a little bit of it into her hand and rubs it in. Blackout, end of play. 
All right. Thank you, folks, uh, for being with us tonight. Thank you, all actors and uh, playwrights. Uh, for those of you uh, keeping score at home, we just want to remind you who wrote what. We had uh, Patterns Repeat by Allison Stewart, Above and Beyond by Bruce Carp, Love Game Match by Don Salvo, The Puzzle by Brianna Barrett, A Call for Help by Katie Thayer, Over and Out by Bethany Dickens, Through the Door by, by Jeanette Dozier, Alone Together by Bethany Dickens and Seconds by Ken Pruce. Thank you all again, uh, playwrights, for submitting. We did have quite a few um, submissions. Uh, also, uh, a heartening thing about this, uh, we had an overwhelming response on a number of actors who wanted to participate in this. Uh, it's very it's it's very good to see that sort of, of camaraderie and volunteerism at a time like this. We do have a couple of, of other folks to thanks. First of all, a uh, big shout out to Megan Pratt for helping us behind the scenes. Uh, she's been texting the actors and getting them ready and letting them know when it's time to go on. Um, I'd like to thank Isle Wolf for his uh, help in getting this set up and for introducing us to StreamYard and how to make this work. I would like to thank Susan for uh, the social media support on this. Uh, we'd also like to thank Al Pergandy for helping us with the readings on uh, choosing the plays. Um, obviously, we need a big, 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 big thank you and shout out to Bethany Dickens, who came up with this idea after all, and uh, has actually, in addition to uh, acting in one of the plays and having a couple of her plays read has also been the person responsible for what you see uh, out uh, here all night. Uh, one last big thank you uh, before we introduce our, uh, before we give a little virtual uh, bow from everyone. Uh, this last play, the last part of Patterns of Pete mentioned that Rose grew up to be a healthcare provider. So for those of you out there who uh, may be listening, who happen to work in the medical field or health card providers or know someone who is, we want to thank you for everything that you are doing right now to keep your patients safe and the rest of us safe. Um, and God bless you for doing that, because this is the time we need that sort of thing. Uh, we wish you all the best and we hope it all turns out OK for everybody. Thank you so, so much for what you do every single day of what we're going through. All right. So lastly, let's go through. Uh, let's do our virtual bows. Uh, Megan Jaluso and Amy Barnacle, who were in Patterns Repeat together. Amy's around there somewhere. Hello. Hi. Well, apparently the lights went Bossy. out and Amy's <laughs> out. So uh, thanks for <laughs> thanks, Amy. Uh, we also had Carla Ellers and Mark Davids in a couple of. Three plays. Hey, <laughs> Mark, I told you not to do that until after the show. Uh, we also had James Blaisdell, who was in a number of shows tonight. And thank you for that. Cheers to you, sir. Uh, we had Jenny Ornstein and Pablo Lorenzo. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Pablo. And uh, let's see if there's anybody I'm missing here. Nope. Oh, yep. And last but not least, Katie Thayer. And I, yeah, just pretend you're drinking something. And of course, <laughs> Bethany Dickens. Thank you so, so much, Bethany, for everything you did. A, a big major thank you to you and a bow to you. Uh, we literally could not be doing this without you. So thank you all so much. All right. Out, out there in uh, Facebook land, thank you so, so much. This is also uh, on our on our obviously we're doing a facebook live we're going to be uh the recording of this will also be on our page you can watch it there uh also we have been streaming to youtube uh on the prtfl channel please join us there you can watch the rerun of this also we have a number of plays from our archives that are also found there uh you can follow us there on youtube for that uh, for those of you wanting to follow us and learn more about uh, the uh, Playwrights Roundtable here in Central Florida, you can send us a, um, an email to info at the prt.com and ask to be put on our newsletter. Uh, we do have, uh, we, we normally have on the second Saturdays of every month a play reading workshop for obvious reasons. Uh, you can't get people that close together right now. So uh, this kind of took the place of that, but we will renew that again once it is safe to do so. Uh, Anybody can come in. Uh, anybody who's got a play can come in and have it read. We always welcome plenty of actors doing just like what we did tonight. 
giving a rating, giving instant feedback. Also, we do have a couple of productions um, that we did have to delay, like many of uh, others here in Central Florida. Uh, Graw, which was our full length by John Kelly that was supposed to appear next weekend, will be presented now in 2021 instead. And uh, we have moved the dates for our sci-fi summer shorts to the fall. So it'll be science fiction fall now. So again, thank you all so, so much. We're glad you enjoyed it. We've been reading the live comments. There's been some great stuff here. Uh, hopefully we'll do this again in better circumstances. It's been a lot of fun for us and we hope you all really enjoyed it. So thank you so much and hopefully we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you. Good night.